Good morning, Whitewater Church. My name is Patrick, and I'm so happy you can join us this morning. It has never been easier to share church with others, so go ahead and click the link, copy and paste it, and send it to a friend. Stay tuned for Whitewater Kids at the end. Thank you guys, and enjoy service. feel ready when the doctor walked into the the delivery room and said, all right, it's time to get up, pick up your baby, and go home. Me and Sarah looked at each other. We were like, we're not ready for this. What an irresponsible thing to give this responsibility to us, to bring this soul, this human being that was placed into our care, to send us home. We've only had this baby, our firstborn child, Novella. We've only had her for like a day and a half, and they're, they're wanting to send us home. Like we didn't feel prepared or ready at all. Like, where's the where's the instruction manual? Uh, where's the like the quick speed dial to this doctor? So if anything goes wrong, we can we can call him. Um, we just it, the the reality of being parents hit us at that moment. Like we were stepping into a whole new world, and we didn't feel ready. But once we, I remember uh, driving the car up and and picking Sarah up. Um, picking that little baby, putting her in her carriage for the first time into our car and sitting in our car and we just looked at each other like, this is a whole new world. And friends, that world has been wonderful and good. We just needed to take that first step, but it was scary. Hey, I want to welcome you to Whitewater. Um, This is a place you can belong before you believe. And our goal is to help every person take the next step in their spiritual journey. 
we've arrived at the conclusion of this story with Jesus. This story started with four friends carrying their friend uh, to Jesus, breaking through a wall to uh, gently lay their paraplegic friend at the feet of Jesus. And last week we learned how uh, Jesus forgave his sins and riled up the Pharisees. And and now at at this moment in this story, I I want us to pick up in verse 5. Jesus saw their faith and said to the paralyzed man, Child, your sins are forgiven. How dare this fellow speak like this, grumbled some of the legal experts and Pharisees, religious leaders, among themselves. It's a blasphemy or it's an insult to God. Who can forgive sins except God? And Jesus knew at once in his spirit that thoughts like this were in the air. It was in the room. Why do your hearts tell you to think like that? He asked. Answer me this. Is it easier to say to this cripple, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up, pick up your stretcher and walk. It's a powerful moment. Which is, which is more difficult to do? And Jesus goes on in verse 10. You want to know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins? Do you want to know? He turned to the paraplegic and said, I tell you, get up, take up your stretcher, and go home. Walk. Get out of here. You're healed. And he got up, picked up his stretcher in a flash, and he went out before all of them. Everyone was astonished. Could you imagine? This man's been paralyzed for probably years, and they praised God. We've never seen anything like this before. That's one thing about Jesus. When you are around Jesus or people who are around Jesus, there are things that just happen, like love and mercy and forgiveness and sometimes wild things that you'd never expect like this. And I I love that quote, we've never seen anything like this. My hope is that you'd experience that with Jesus. There's moments in your life as you walk with Jesus, toward Jesus. Wow, I've never seen anything like this before. God's so good. Now, I want to talk to you guys about this simple teaching that we learn in this story. And it's that it's the simple statement. Get up, pick up your stretcher, and walk. That's from Jesus. So the first thing, get up. Uh, We have this little French bulldog. He's on the tiny side for even a a French bulldog. People think he's a pug, which is kind of insulting. Like, is that a pug? Sorry, pug owners. But our dog um, is just, he's like just tense, always ready to launch into someone's lap. So if someone comes to our house and they don't know our dog, and he's pretty strong for his size, and they say, hey, up, he launches. I mean, he's just this, he's like out of a cannon. And all of a sudden, they've got this dog that's just super strong and tiny and crawling over and they try to toss him off and he won't stop. And so you got to be careful when you say, get up to our dog. And to some people, you got to be careful because they're ready to go. Many of us, um, when, when it's our opportunity to move, it's our opportunity to get up. When we've been down, when we've been paralyzed, when we haven't been able to move, when we've been in fear or in pain or, or we're really hurt, um, when it's time to get up, sometimes we don't know if we have the strength, we don't believe it, or we're just not ready. In this story, I love that these, these four friends carry their friend who's heavy, you know, and they break through a roof and they slowly and I think tenderly uh, lowered him to the floor to get him to the feet of Jesus. They did all this work to get him to Jesus. They did everything they could possibly do, but one decision remained and one alone, and it was only a decision the paraplegic could make. And that was the decision to trust Jesus and to get up. That's a, that's a uh, decision that many of us will face in our life. Will we trust Jesus at his word and do what he says? Will we just simply trust him? And the evidence of trust, the fruit of trust, is the action that follows. Will this man get up? I have some friends um, I have mentioned uh, uh, in this series, and they had a, a son struggle with terrible addiction. And they, like these friends, did everything in their power. I mean, they carried him, they brought him, they knocked down barrier after barrier and laid him at the feet of Jesus. They laid him at the foot of doctors and and, um, groups that could help. But at the end of the day, only their son could choose to get up. You, as hard as this is, as a parent, as a friend, as a loved one, you 
cannot make the decision for somebody to get up. You cannot make the decision to follow Jesus for someone else. If you've been hurt, you've been paralyzed uh, because of finances, because of a relationship, because of uh, a pain, maybe something really hard in your life spiritually. If you haven't, if you've been down and out, only you can make the decision to get back up, uh, to trust in Jesus, and move forward. And you can't just rely on the people who have knocked down the walls for you, who have carried you. Um, and you don't, you don't want to live a life where you're just constantly enabled to never get up, you know, have people carry you everywhere and break down everything for you, only to never make the decision to get up. You have to make a decision whether or not you're going to get up. Number two, pick up the stretcher. And Jesus says this to a man who's been paralyzed. His stretcher, his mat, this thing he's been laying on probably for years, for some time, maybe his whole life. We don't know how long he had been paralyzed. This is the thing that he's come to know. This is the thing that's defined who he is. He's, para he's paralyzed. He's a paraplegic. In his culture, he's crippled. In his culture, his disability was seen as directly linked to like some sin or some problem that he had, like a heart issue. Um, that was prevalent in his day and age. And so you can just see the stretcher, this thing that had carried him, had also become his identity, the thing uh, that defined who he was. And Jesus says, pick that up. Like Jesus is saying, now you've been carried by that stretcher. Your friends have carried you in that stretcher. They've laid you down in front of me. And what I want you to do is to carry the thing that has been carrying you. I think that's really significant. And carrying the stretcher is a reminder to carry that which has carried you. And there's a moment in our life where we realize that maybe there's friendships or, or responsibilities or things in our life that have been a gift, that have helped us. But there comes a time where the thing that was carrying you now, is it's your time to carry that thing. Because the reality is the stretcher carrying him forward, but could only carry him forward so far. Like if he was ever going to walk again, he had to like get out of that. And the thing that was carrying was also holding him back if he chose to remain in the stretcher. He could have just stayed there laid in front of Jesus. Nope, this is who I am. I don't, I don't believe you. I don't think anything could change. Um, I've, I'm comfortable here. And that, that, that thing that carries us can become so comfortable we never want to leave it. But he was designed for more. He was designed for the freedom to walk of his own will and of his own decision. Sometimes the thing that protects us and nurtures us becomes the thing that keeps you from moving forward and finding healing and freedom. I had a friend who had a cast, had it for a long time. The thing was so cool. I remember everybody signing it and everybody wanted to sign it back in those days. It was like the big old, like huge cast, you know, they used to put on in the 80s and uh, I remember that thing, it was cool at first, but then it started to smell. And then at some point, like his mom's like, all right, we're going to get this thing off. And the kid didn't want it off because he had all these friends like that wanted to sign it. He had like, look at all the friends he has like on signing his cast. But at some point, the cast needed to come off and he needed to use that limb again on his own. And so it is uh, with God and us. There are things God brings into our, our lives that are part of the process of our healing. But we have to move beyond the cast. The cast is designed to help and then be cut off so that we can move of our own free will. I think another really profound thing about this statement is that we're to carry our past with us. We're not supposed to forget our past. We carry our past with us. But don't let your past carry you. Carry your past with you, but don't let your past carry you. Because if you're submitting to the past, you're never going to walk into a new future. But if you carry the past with you, the best lessons, the best reality, never forget what you went through, you're able to learn and walk into a new future, something that's free, something that you're designed for, something that gives you joy and life, rather than this repetitive circular cycle, all of a sudden you have a new horizon. That's what Jesus comes and does with this man. And uh, if you remember, uh, I've shared a story about a man who lost his son to ad addiction. And when he lost his son, he just went into a deep, deep depression. And he allowed his past to carry him everywhere. 
I mean, he was paralyzed by it. His past was carrying him. He's paralyzed in, in the arms of this depression of what happened to his son, and who can blame him? And there's a season where we're carried by that. But at some point, we have to start carrying our past. And, and this man, because of a friend, persistent love in his life, he eventually got up, he, he stood up, and he carried that which had carried him. And he carried the lessons and the love of his son in a new way that enabled him to have a new future and to see a new future. You know, I imagine when that man started carrying around that stretcher and people saw that, that stretcher, it was a reminder, a, a, a sign of what God had done in his life. And what originally was a sign, a stretcher that was a sign of his uh, disability became a sign of hope for other people. And I, want, I just want to ask you simply, what in your past do you need to start carrying as a sign of hope for others? Jesus said, get up, pick up your stretcher, and walk. Go home. You have a new future. And this third step is so important. Walk. Walk into the light. If you remember in this story, Jesus is probably in his own home, teaching, preaching. He's got his own plans for his ministry, and he's He's, it's all organized, and he's got his prepared speech. And all of a sudden, the roof literally caves in because these guys love their friends so much. They were willing to carry him and break through the healer's roof and lay him at the feet of Jesus. And when that hole was being dug, light was being let into the room. A new reality was happening for everyone. And Jesus didn't just see that as this interruption uh, to be pushed aside. He saw this as a disruption and interruption that, that was a learning moment, a moment where transformation could occur. At the end of it, Jesus says, walk, walk. Just like that doctor looked at me and my wife and said, it's time to get up, pick up that baby, and walk into a new world, a new future together. I think Jesus is saying to many of us, it's time to get up, pick up that stretcher, and walk into that new future with me. I think it's really important to remember that we're not just freed and healed from something. We are freed and healed for something, for a new future, for a relationship with God. And um, this man's whole horizon, his whole life has changed where he probably, if he had been married, he, you know, he wasn't going to have any children. And he might have he might have been cast aside by that, that relationship and it ended his marriage. Or he, he might not have been able to provide uh, any living. He didn't have any future outside of that stretcher. God gives him a new future. And it all started because four friends would not be denied of bringing their friend to Jesus. Imagine, like, years later, years later, a little boy opening up this new book by this guy named Mark. And in the opening, just within the first few pages, reading this story about a man who was paralyzed, who was brought to Jesus. You see him saying, oh, that's such a cool story. Grandpa, come look at this story. And his grandpa, living in Capernaum, says, oh, yeah, that was me. And the, my friends, you know them, they live down the street, brought me to Jesus. The reason that I have you in my life and the reason that I have anything good in my life is because of that man, Jesus. You know, maybe the story of bringing someone to Jesus or allowing someone to bring you to Jesus could be your story today. And Jesus is still doing things like this, forgiving sins, freeing people to a new future, telling people to get up, pick up that which has been carrying you, carry it, and walk into a new future. He's still doing that today. And sometimes it just takes allowing people to carry you or digging through the barriers, getting to Jesus, and making a decision to walk. You can have that future today, and I want to encourage you to walk into the glorious light of the freedom of God. Come now, and as you are, as you want to be, are you ready? Are you ready? Come now, tired, broken, scared, or just.
just in need Ready or not, take your time If nothing else, just come
Whitewater family, we just want to thank you so much for your continued generosity during the season, especially financially. If you want to partner with us financially, you can go to our website or you can just mail us a check. That's perfectly fine too. We cannot do this without you. Also, if you want to be a part of how we're blessing the community week by week, email us at info at whitewaterchurch.org and we will connect you with one of our blessing teams. We would love to have you. I hope the story of four friends, the paraplegic, and Jesus has been something that's really blessed you and maybe just opened your eyes to some things about your life and the, you know, the life that God has for you. I just want to leave you with uh, three key questions. The first one is about friendship, the friendship that really got this whole start, story started. And um, who, who are the friends in your life? If you were to really look at your life, who are the friends that maybe have been carrying you? or the friends that you think would help carry you? And who can you be that kind of a friend for? Think about it, write it down, connect with them, thank them. The second question is around forgiveness. Jesus forgives. And it's like this forgiveness that was so like catalytic in helping this man realize, that, oh, Jesus can heal me. And sometimes we need forgiveness and able to have freedom. So where in your life do you need to receive the forgiveness of God. Not just know it, but receive that forgiveness. And then lastly, uh, Jesus freed this man to get up, pick up his stretcher, and walk home, walk into a new future. And I, I, I want to ask you, 
What has Jesus freed you from? And what has Jesus freed you for? What is he wanting to free you for? What has God designed you for with your life? We love you so much. So grateful to journey with you. And um, hope you have a great day. And we'll see you next week. If you got kids, go ahead and click on Whitewater Link and head over there.